So now that we've looked at how to construct an RDF document, let's revisit the RDF namespace and look at some of the entities that are declared there that then get used in Dublin Core and the Dublin Core namespace. So here we are back at our old friend, the document 22RDF syntax NS. And in the header here, we have these two lines. Actually, we have four lines that declare namespaces, but we're only going to worry about two right now, which is the RDF and the RDFS namespaces. Now, the RDF namespace, you'll notice, is this file that we're looking at right here, 22 RDF syntax NS. RDFS, we haven't actually talked about yet, but it is it stands for RDF syntax, and RDFS is RDF, but it's a predefined set of entities that are declared in a namespace all of their own that get referred to by other RDF documents such as this one and the name of the document is RDF-schema and let's take a look at that document right now. Here we are, RDF-schema. So Again, you get this standard header piece, which declares namespaces. This all gets a bit circular. And then you get a series of declarations of different entities with different names, etc. cetera. Um, the first one to notice is resource. And the RDFS colon label tag tells you what the name is of the entity being declared. So in this case, that name is resource. And you get declarations for, cl for class and subclass and subproperty. and even things like comment and label, right? So all of these tags that we're looking at, like RDFS label, the meaning of that is defined right here in this block where the label is being defined, right? The comment is, it is, a human readable name for the subject and you get explanations for what files contain the data to interpret that entity and you'll notice that all of these URLs refer to this file right here RDF schema so this does get fairly circular the point is that this RDF schema, RDFS document, which is a namespace declaring all of these entities, can then be referred to by other RDF documents, such as our old friend 22RDF syntax namespace. Right? And in fact, any XML document can refer to the RDFS document. So um, let's look at the entities that are being declared here. So first, remember, as I said, you look at the RDFS label to find out what the name of the entity is, and in this case, it's type. Now, what this is about is we are referring to this URL 
type. And this property is defined by the namespace at that URL, which is, of course, this very document. So this piece here is a bit self-referential, right? What this is saying is what we are talking about is the property called type and it is defined by this file that you can find here which in this case just happens to be the file that we're looking at then we get label as i said we get comment the subject is an instance of a class in other words the subject is a kind of resource because classes are resources um, then we get RDFS range and domain. The range is RDF schema class, the class entity that's declared in the RDF schema document. And domain is RDF schema resource, the resource entity declared in the RDF schema document. The difference between range and domain is that domain refers to a property and range refers to the values of that property, the range of values that can be assigned to a property. Both properties and values are instances of classes. In other words, they are themselves resources. Both properties and values are themselves resources. Then, let me scroll down a little bit. Then we are looking at label property, right? So again, you get this self-referential bit at the top where we're talking about 22 RDF syntax NS property, which is this block here and it is defined by this file. So again, what we're saying is the property entity is being defined in this document at this location. Again, the comment, a class of RDF properties, and it is a subclass of RDF schema resource. So property is a subclass of resource. Resource is defined in the RDF schema document. So this file goes on to define statement and subject and predicate and object, etc., etc. Um, all of those entities that we need to talk about RDF triples, subject, object, and predicate, and to talk about the values that those entities can take on, talking about properties and, and classes and resources and whatnot, are defined either here in this document or in the RDF schema document. So now that we have those two documents, you can use them in your own DTD, right? All you need to do is refer to those documents in the header section of any DTD that you then create. And in fact, these documents are used in DTDs for many, many XML documents, including, of course, the Dublin Core DTD.